Whatsoever I see in my head, do that's what I do. That means that headship is different from what we actually believe it is. Headship means source. You are a life giver. That means that when you become the head of your wife, you give her life that what she has never ever dreamt of in her life will begin to come out. The Bible says cancer in the heart of a man is like deep water. A man of understanding will bring it out. That means that the more your wife comes to you and you get connected to her as the head, the, the, the greater her dreams will become. The things that were locked up inside will start coming out. That's what makes you the head. And the Bible says God has given him a name that is above every other name. As the head of Jesus. How many of us will give a name to our wife? Or to our to the person we are head? That means that God allowed Jesus to happen. And the question is that you men, Jesus is out your head. What could you not do by Jesus being your head? You know, sometimes some of the things we talk about is actually culture. What you learned from Otegodo. Sorry. <laughs> what, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm very sorry. That's not a statement you should make here. What you learned from your family house. And that's why I told Abraham, get out of your father's house. Because there's where I'm going to show you. And so we as men and husbands, we need to recalibrate ourselves. I was listening to, this, to the, uh, when Pastor Taiwo Dukoya remarried, and they were asking, say to your first wife, she blew up singles and married and everything. So what do you see about this, your present wife? Say, I see a children's ministry. It takes a man to recalibrate himself to see Jesus and the wife. And that she's carrying something. I needed to recalibrate myself. I was with the FDA student yesterday. And I asked myself, when I got married, two years, three years, I was topsy turvy married to a pastor, pastor in a church, and I began to scan everywhere. Is there a woman who was pastoring and is not married? I mean church, not itinerary ministry. I couldn't find. And the greatest template is in the Bible. And the Lord showed me Joseph and Mary. In this day and time, God is looking for faithful Josephs and faithful Marys. How we come together, partner with heaven for heaven to invade their marriage. Or invade the earth through their marriage. So the first thing we need to do to achieve this is that men and husband need to recalibrate ourselves. We should insist on our roles, not traditions. Not tradition, on our roles. We should insist on our roles. There's a book written by uh, Tony Evans and another person called Strength-Based Marriage. Strength-Based Marriage. In Mark 7, 8 to 9, it says, You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to the traditions of men. And he said to them, you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. Your own traditions. And there are traditions that are very oppressive. Now, now let me give you a background. When Jesus appeared, there was a religion that developed during the time that Jesus, that the, the word of God was not, was, not so, um, was not common for 400 years. Why? That religion is called Judaism. Judaism has 613 laws. Hundreds of those laws were against women. And we still have the laws still today. In fact, one rabbi said, I would rather burn the Torah than teach it to a woman. That is how, the, the, that was the culture that Jesus came to meet. They have, a, they have tradition for everything. How to lace your shoe. You wear the leg, first leg, you won't lace it. You wear the second leg, you lace it, then you go back and lace the other one. If you, if, if you miss it, you have sinned. So when Jesus is saying traditions of men, now the question is that do we have traditions? Are there traditions that, that they say? Sometimes I just see some people say, no, I will tell my wife I'm a Benima. I will tell my man, wife I'm a Nishama. No. Even, listen, and I'll be wondering, are you born again? Say, 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 Pastor, leave that thing. 
So at that point in time, there is culture clash. Is it the culture of heaven or your own culture? So we need to insist on our roles. There are many men here, I assure you. You know how to cook more than your wife. You know how to do the budgeting, the calculation of all the food in the house because you were the one that was guarding your mother. Yeah, you know how. You're, I'm serious. There are some women here, some of you, some men, you don't have business to do with the money. Just submit it. Submit it or you become, you know you, are a very, you, are, you, are, you have a messy gift. The man, you have a messy gift. You can even borrow money to even give people. You see how ah, he's suffering. You go and borrow, I'm telling you. There are some people, it's not their greasing, it's a messy gift. It's a messy gift. Your wife has the gift of administration. Give her the money and see whether you will not pay your house or you will not pay school fees. We need to insist on our rules, not our tra tradition. Ralph Holland came here one time and said, when he married, he, he, he told himself he's the one that will handle the money. After some time, the thing was going haywire. He called his wife. He said, at the head of this house, I now commission you to handle the finances. Amen. <laughs> you let my wife handle our finances? We are finished. <laughs> Is it E? OJ? Maybe give me money before. Where I put the money? Why? She's not bothered. She said, mm, you don't lose, okay. <laughs> we insist on her rules. On her rules, on how. There are some women here, you know how to deal with mechanic. Free your husband of the pain. Just free him. Because some people say, say, say uh, my friend, when, he, when the car will, will spoil, he will call the husband. Listen, don't call him. You will be more frustrated. We need to insist on our rules. Dan, I remember one of our facilitators who came to teach, teach, teach us on, on our street children. He told us one day the wife, was, the wife gave birth and he came. The, the mother came to do the distance. So the wife just put yam in the, in the fire and when it was done, the wife came and gave him signal. So he went to the kitchen and started pounding. And after they finished pounding the mother, he's an Asian man. Uh -huh. <laughs> the goal of this school is to raise up kingdom citizens that carry the culture of heaven into the spheres of modern day society. We have put together faculty that will give you the necessary DNA to carry this culture effectively into everywhere you find yourself. When man fell, our emotions were weakened, they were damaged. Our ability to relate with others, our relational skills were damaged. A facade is the false projection, the false role you now play to be able to, med to survive the pain that you have found inside you. That's a facade. Where you are coming from can project into who you are if you don't intentionally do something about it.
The mother called him and said, eh? You are the one now pounding. <laughs> and I told the mother, sit down. He said, but we were pounding at home. And we were boys. You know, I don't really know the role of a woman and a man. Because my mother had three boys. So now tell me, what do women do? What do men do? We cooked. We washed clothes. We washed the toilet. I even fried Gary. So please, tell me, what is the role of a woman? I'm confused. And so instead of traditions of men, let us insist. The Bible says in Luke chapter 4 verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord, Jesus is saying, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Question I would say, who are the oppressed in church? Women, are you oppressed in church? <laughs> And Jesus came to set the oppressed free. So anywhere you see oppression, you have freedom to you have permission to bring free freedom. The same way men happen in church is the same way women should happen. And it's on rules. I don't believe in the matter what a man can do, a woman can do. I don't believe in that. I don't. A man can carry heavy weight, but a man cannot sustain a weight. You can carry one heavy bag. The only thing I will do is to give you one cup and say, hold it for, for five hours. That's what a woman can do. A woman can carry pregnancy nine months. You know what it means? If they told us to carry, we can't. <laughs> this tablet is not heavy. You can carry it. But the weight of this tablet is depending on how long you carry it. Carry it for, for, for 24 hours. You'll see how your hand will become numb. <laughs> so a woman carries 10 kg for nine months. It's progressing. 10 kg. Please, men, can you carry 10 kg? Put 10 kg on your back every day. Sleep with the 10 kg. Wake up with the 10 kg. Have your bath with the 10 kg. Cook with the 10 kg. Drive with the 10 kg. And everything. Listen. So we need to insist on our rules instead of tradition. And as long as there's oppression, you can bring freedom. And lastly, we need to look at the, the scriptures that disempower women. Because we have taken some scriptures out of context. Because as I'm talking now, some people will say, Pastor, there are some places they say women should not talk. Is that not true? Yes. Huh? Yes. Huh? Sometimes we will get text messages say, well, we like what this woman is teaching. But what I cannot remember is that the Bible says women should not preach. I mean text messages. Say, 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 you are at it again. I've been wondering. Now, 40 people under inspiration of the Holy Spirit wrote the 66 books of the Bible. 40. And you must understand, Apostle Paul was a Pharisee. He wrote letters, and three of such letters supposedly restricted women. Letters to the Corinthians, Ephesians, and the islands of Crete. These, were the, these are the letters we say he wrote. He wrote nine letters. And three of these letters supposedly restricted women. And we're going to look at these letters so that you understand what Apostle Paul was saying. And you understand that I want to read all these letters and the introduction so that I will tell you why. Paul called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brother Sustainus. The church of God that is in Corinth, I underline it. The church of God that is in Corinth. That means that this letter is written specifically to the church in Corinth, not the church in Ephesus, not the church in Thessalonica, not the church in Laodicea. Thank you. 
Galatians 1, 1 and 2. Paul, an apostle, sent not from men, nor by man, but by Jesus Christ and God, the Father, who raised him from the dead. And to all the brothers with me, and to the churches in where? In the churches in Galatia. Colossians 4, 16. After this letter has been read to you, see that it's also read in the church in the Lodesha, of the Lodatians. And that you, in turn, read the letter from Lodesha. In other words, Colossae, the church in Colossae, listen to me. When you read this letter I'm writing to you, take it to Lodesha, let them also read the letter, it's also for them. And the one I wrote to them, also come and read it. So, Philippians 1.1, 1, 1, Paul and Timothy, servants of, Jesus, of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus at what? Philippi. That means that the letter to the church in the, 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 the letters to the Philippians is for the church in Philippi. That means that what in 1 Corinthians 14, and this is where we will go, that means that all the letters were specific to a church. So the church to firm foundation, the letter to firm foundation is different from the letter to redeem. The goal of this school is to raise up kingdom citizens that carry the culture of heaven into the spheres of modern day society. We have put together faculties that will give you the necessary DNA to carry this culture effectively into everywhere you find yourself. When man fell, our emotions were weakened, they were damaged. Our ability to relate with others, our relational skills were damaged. A facade is the false projection, the false role you now play to be able to, to survive the pain that you have found inside you. That's a facade. Where you're coming from can project into who you are if you don't intentionally do something about it. That means that the letter he wrote to Corinthians, the letter he wrote to Ephesus, and it was, it was, it was when he was writing to Timothy. Timothy was a pastor in Ephesus. And why did he write these letters? And I will try to tell you. When Apostle Paul was at, during his ministry, there were three classes of women. Three classes of women. One, the Jewish women, the Hebrew women. The second, the Roman women. And, and uh, the Greek women. The Jewish women were highly oppressed. 600 and 1300 laws against them. Oppressed set of women. That's why Jesus did not have a female disciple. Because he could not bypass the culture. He would have to infiltrate the culture to free them. He said, why did you, now if women were empowered, why did Jesus not have them? They would, they would suspect him. They would think he's not a rabbi. But you must ask yourself, who was the message of Jesus giving to first? And the resurrection, who took the message first? Okay. Now, the Roman women had some power, 50-50. 50-50, 50-50. They, they, they are allowed to have lands and houses, but not too much. The Greek women were the ogre. The oppressed men. I mean, people do not know that. It, it, it. The Greek women oppressed men, and they were living in Corinth, Ephesus, and the island of Crete. So when he said, the same Apostle Paul said there's neither male nor female. It's the one answering something. But the thing is answering is not the way we, we actually see it. And we look at it clearly. 
In 1 Corinthians, writing to the church in Corinth, this is the letter to the church in Corinth, that women were oppressive. In 1 Corinthians 14, 1 to 5, that's why you have the Greek goddess Artemis. How many of you know that? You have seen it some film. And in those places, they serve the Greek goddess Artemis. And you have Greek uh, women uh, pastors, sorry, women priests and women temple prostitutes. When you, call, when you see temple prostitutes, please, don't look at those like the ones standing on the road, no. These are the cream de la cream of society. If a temple prostitute call you as a man to sleep with her, it's like the fathers of faith in Nigeria. Papa Debo Debo and everybody lay hands on you and releasing whole anointing. That's how that you, 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 you will use it to oppose. Because they have found you worthy. And so the Greek men believe that women are so powerful because a woman is the only one that can quench your sex drive. And so they worship them. In 1 Corinthians, now Apostle Paul is writing because we say that in this letter he restricted women. Look at what he said. Pursue love, desire spiritual gift, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him, however in the spirit he speaks mystery. But he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, comfort and comfort to men. Let's go on. He who speaks in tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all you all you all is what? You all. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more you prophesied that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues. Unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. However, verse 26, is it then brethren, whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. For you can all for you can all for you can all The goal of this school is to raise up kingdom citizens that carry the culture of heaven into the spheres of modern day society. We have put together faculty that will give you the necessary DNA to carry this culture effectively into everywhere you find yourself. When man fell, our emotions were weakened, they were damaged. Our ability to relate with others, our relational skills were damaged. A facade is the false projection, the false role you now play to be able to, med to survive the pain that you have found inside you. That's a facade. Where you're coming from can project into who you are if you don't intentionally do something about it. <laughs>